What's going on everyone? How are you? Sorry for the noise pollution for my AC if you can hear it. I'm not sure if the audio picks it up, but it's uh, this is the Alumacraft. This is the other kind of, you know, forgotten project. One of the two that I need to finish in terms of finishing what I started. Quick note, anything here that, uh, like the pore foam and some of the other stuff in here can be found in my Amazon store. I have links, all of it below. Just hit the expansion box or the, the little down arrow and it'll, and it'll expand the description. Pretty excited to drop this video because I think it answers a lot of questions about the decking that, um, I hadn't done and I just have a lot of specifics in this video I think will answer little questions that I get all the time that uh, I'm just not able to answer in bulk but I think I can do it in bulk with this video. That one's fine. <laughs> that one came out incredibly bad. This 3 8 inch uh, fur rated plywood that I was gonna use initially for the entire project. After like careful consideration, I thought that uh, it's seriously too much of a risk to use 3 8 inch. So all the, all the major panels and structures have half inch uh, five ply. And so I think uh, if we use this cheaper and also lighter plywood, um, in these in these sections where we're not really going to be putting a whole lot of weight on at all. The majority of the weight is going to be going in these sections. Boom. Here. Yep, there it is. Sweet. Fine. What you're going to do is... Say by the rising, now it's rising. Now it's gonna start pouring. Here it goes. All right, now we pour. I think it's ready now. And also, if you wait till it starts to bubble like that, it has less of a chance of expanding into like small cracks that are gonna just cause you more problems later. So we're getting fair expansion. Um, pretty good. We have minimal seepage out in the sections. I'm really, really cautious about seepage because of what happened to the beaver's boat last time I had seeped it, and even over here, where that's uh, fairly old pore foam in the making, uh, we're wanting this to... Once the bottom seals, I'm thinking we can really kind of be copious. That is a little hedgy because we're not going to get a whole lot of expansion. The stuff doesn't expand that much when it's in, like, sections. It expands a lot when it's together and it's able to feed and heat up and, and feed off the energy. When you when you have it layered over the tubes, I've noticed that it, it suffers with expansion. Even actually right now, we're having a lot of residual expansion. It's still not done expanding, but it's... We'll have even more now because I can layer it over here and layer it in certain sections, and then it'll puddle in certain sections, and then pff, it'll expand. And I can even kind of govern it before it hardens to make sure it doesn't overkill to where we're going to put the hatch. And then once it hardens over here, the tubes themselves will stay in place, and we won't have this... this, this you know, fiasco that I had earlier with them. Then. This one I obviously check for how correct my measurements were initially. Things change now. Now we can... Now we can kind of estimate where we're gonna need to draw if I can find my stupid marker. I this fits. Let's see if this fits in that pocket or if we have to retrim. almost fits it's a little bit more aggressively trim because we knew this was gonna taper in a little bit more going that way because obviously it shrinks right there so I knew that It'd be so easy if I could just trace this exactly to the other side oh no no definitely not see so yeah 
One side does not fit all. I don't know if my foul got corrupted, but this is quad foam. This is closed cell spray foam, which is not good for flotation. But what it is good is it's good for our sealing in gaps, um, filling in gaps that you think are pretty crucial is most of the can. We're gonna end up filling in these sections with pour foam, and then we're gonna have two big offsets back here, which will also hold in pour foam. but I was smart enough to run functional conduits. I'm trying to get the vast majority of this boat built today. So I uh, got a, look at how old and archaic this thing is, man. It's like from the dark ages, look at that. All the templates cut out everything's good now we're gonna start running the lips on everything i mean i don't have the very exact back we'll cut the very back out probably going to just because of how things are we're probably going to lip and panel the the major sections then as we're gonna cut just cut another piece of three eighths like in inch strips to give it the lip and then we're going to deal underneath it that's what we're going to do to get along along that section that should work just fine Stiffen this up significantly. And again, if I wanted to lay another strip right here, that probably would also do a lot for it. Just for strength wise. I don't know if I need to do that, but I probably would just lay another strip just for just for additional strength. We left the front up there open because we're gonna connect the two pieces. To keep them strong, keep them from flexing. Now we have the middle of the point, so I'm probably just gonna cut this. I mean, that's a straight edge right there. We're just gonna cut that. Put it right there. Oddly intricate piece of what we need to do. I'm going to just go ahead and uh, paint this and carpet this and then put it on because I think anything I do beyond that will, uh, I think it'll cause me problems if I try to do the hatches and this. That's what I had, I had problems. I had to redo a few hatches last time. So I just try to do it all together. I think the outside pieces, the, inter I mean the, the, this, the side pieces, like those pieces. And then you can really focus on hatches at a, in, a, in a different time. I think we're just gonna paint them in series. I don't like to do that. I like to do it all at once. But if I really wanted this deck to come out super awesome like I want, gotta be in pieces.
So the waiting to section off all these hatches, it's a huge pain in the A, but it's working. The panels one by one come out way better than when I try to do them all at once and then try to fit them all together. Pretty happy about this all. Um, these are, th this is 0 0.025 aluminum sheeting. Super hard. And if it can do that for 0 0.025, imagine what it can do for actual, for a hole in terms of structural integrity. With the, the Total Boat two-part polyurethane pour foam, I, I think that will do loads for how this boat handles in the water on the rough terrain in terms of its safety. It's overall, what it does for the boat, it's gonna be big. And, Holders, uh, Scotty accessories. Um, I uh, got pretty good in the framing here. I thought that was done pretty good. I was smart enough to run some conduits here. Smart enough to run some. So, the, uh, this is still a thing. I know there's a bunch of stuff on it. I just got the CUSA board in like today. That's why I don't have a video on this deal or I would have just went hard at this one all weekend. I just didn't get, I'm stockpiling stuff to build this boat, actually both boats. So that's why, but it's right there in that box. We'll be unboxing the CUSA board next. So stick around for that. Check out both these yak killers. They're going to be sick coming out here in the next few weeks.